This video was made possible by EA Game Changers. They paid for my flight, hotel, trip to E3, and to the conference, which I'm about to criticize, which is going to make it very awkward when I submit it to the creator program. But robust opinions, for lack of a better word, are important, and yeah, that, that EA press conference was rough. That wouldn't... That was a hard one for me to sit through, and it has been by far the most disliked and memed part of E3 2018. E3 2018's been pretty hot so far, a lot of good things going on. EA press conference, not really one of them. And what we're going to talk a lot about today is I want to offer some insights into why EA is pumping mobile games so hard, why there was such a big disconnect at the press conference, and who thought this was a good idea. To be fair, there were some good parts of the press conference. You had this really energetic and excited German lady to come in and talk about Sea of Solitude. It was by far the highlight of that conference, and still for me the highlight of any conference. You could see the real enthusiasm and joy and care and diligence in her presentation, and she was just super excited to show her thing. And I wish there were more developer presenters like this one. Battlefield 5 is looking great. That's what I came to EA play to capture. That's mostly what you're going to see gameplay of today is from the Allied side since I had all access yesterday. There'll be some access stuff too, but Battlefield 5 is looking good. They announced Battlefield Royale, they had trailers, they had deep dive, they had gameplay available. Anthem honestly looks incredible. Every single time I see it, Anthem is looking better. It looks like a better Destiny, but maybe with Iron Man mods. Pretty much any game that lets me be Iron Man, I'm going to be very happy with. But this focus on mobile games and Command and Conquer Rivals Reveal, it was like a Wings of Redemption level lowlight. Side note, pretty much every single creator I talked to at the event has been watching Wings of Redemption lowlights. I just can't do it. I watch it for like two minutes and it's funny and then I start feeling like a bully and I just have to step back from that. That's just, that's just bad, bad stuff. But let's talk about Command and Conquer Rivals. It was a surprise release for everybody at the event. It really wasn't teased, it wasn't announced. There were a few people that noticed the sign and we didn't really know what it was because it was set up to be playable very soon, but we didn't know that it was a mobile game. What they did is they, you know, they lower the lights, they pull the game up, they bring out a professional StarCraft player that won a tournament in 2007, and then a mobile YouTuber that had 25 million subscribers, and I was like, what, the, you're putting up a pro, a, pro, a pro gamer against a mobile YouTuber, that guy's just going to get rolled. And they started playing a mobile game, which to me initially looked very, very similar to Halo Wars. And then I started recognizing some of the characters and some of the voices and the units, and you know, I was going back to the 90s and early 2000s here, and I saw that Command and Conquer Rivals sign on the wall, and I put 2 and 18 together, which makes 24, and I was like, yeah, this... This is, this is, yeah, god damn it. It's, uh, mm. What have they done to you, Command and Conquer? I, th I, I thought you could stop this, Yuri, but your mind control wasn't enough. They turned it into a mobile game. I used to play Command and Conquer back in the day, so I recognized what was happening. I started getting cold sweats. I was getting frustrated. And I was watching this, and I was like, okay, I'm going to look for playability, because real-time strategy on mobile makes sense. You click the units and move them around. It was very simplified, though. And if I'm not mistaken, the mobile gamer beat the pro player, which just is, is, is ludicrous to me, uh, respectfully to the mobile gamers and influence, most influencers, most of them that I play at events, barely know how a more traditional game works, much less beat a pro player. So, so 800 million props to you, and then bam, surprise reveal, it's Command and Conquer, to, well, not many people really surprised at this point, and they play the trailer. <sighs> And uh, I was emotionally hurt, and the audience was dead silent. However, if you watch the stream, you'll hear a big group of people cheering. That's not an after effect, that's not a cheat. There was a group of people there cheering. There was a big row of maybe like 20 mobile influencers they had out. They were relatively close to the front, so they could be heard very easily. Very, very loud cheers. Everybody else pretty much silent, confused, not really sure what to make of it, you know, it was one of the best examples of a disconnect that I had ever seen, not necessarily between EA and the other people, but between the two types of audiences that were present. And as the press conference went on, and e even before that point, there was just a big focus on mobile games, Madden game, NBA game, NHL, FIFA mobile, every single thing that you could think mobile that EA could do was a mobile game. And almost everybody there was thinking like, WTF 
is EA doing using their big E3 show to promote mobile games? And that's what I'm here to talk about today. And even though that was a very awkward, stressful intro to this video, I do want to offer some insight into why they did this. Because there there's a good reason that EA is promoting mobile games. The shortest and simplest reason is money. And I'm not even, I don't mean that in a negative like EA criticism way. Every single giant gaming company wants money. And mobile games are huge games. They're, the player bases are enormous, larger than most traditional games. The revenue is enormous. Again, the revenue from mobile games is larger than most traditional games. And as a side note from mobile games, the amount of data collection that you can pull from the app is also very valuable and very vast. In 2017 alone, EA made over $500 million just on mobile games, making it one of their more profitable sectors considering the relative amount of resources that were put into developing those games. That's been rapidly growing over time. I wouldn't be surprised if in 2018 it was closer to 800 to maybe $900 million on mobile games. They aren't alone either. Activision, Bethesda, Tencent, even uh, you know, Epic Games and Fortnite, they're all doing mobile games and they're all making a ton of money on their mobile games. Now for the most part, Activision and Epic don't advertise their mobile games side by side with their big releases at E3. However, Bethesda did this year. They didn't get criticized for it because they mostly were just doing it as a small part of their show and they were doing like Fallout Shelter, which was already popular. But uh, yeah, every game company on the planet is doing mobile games. Even if it's under a sub-brand or a subsidiary or a different company, they're rolling these things out. Now, you and I, real gamers here on YouTube watching Battlefield, Call of Duty, or you know, PUBG, Fortnite, whatever, we'd, we don't want to lower ourselves to that base level of plebeians who play Cash of Clans, those mouth breathers on Madden Mobile, and those true game traitors who play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. But a ton of people do play those games, and a ton of people don't have the same attitudes that we, for lack of a better word, true gamers have about mobile games not being real games, or them being lesser or inferior or not wanting to play them. I do know a lot of people that play all sorts of shooters, single player, multiplayer, hardcore games, and they'll still boot up games like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes on their phone and play that in, on their lunch break at work, or just when they're riding in a car, or just maybe before going to bed it's just like a really casual fun game to play and Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes probably made more money for EA last year than most of their major single player releases or at least single player releases for other slightly smaller companies and Star Wars Galaxies of Heroes, Madden Mobile and all these other games made more money almost certainly with less resources into development like making a mobile game isn't nearly as hard as making a console or PC game it's much much simpler and they make banks so if EA can make more money on Madden Mobile than they can with say Anthem there's a reason they're focusing on these things the other reason is a little bit more of a philosophical one than a business one for these companies so Electronic Arts, Activision, Tencent, Epic Games almost all of these companies see themselves as a software service type of business less than a gaming company or at least more okay so people in the company probably see themselves gamers whatever but I guarantee you people investing into EA and Activision and stuff don't care about those games they see it as a software service and they want to know where the money's coming from and these PE ratios and you know stock stuff we'll, we'll keep it simple on that so if you look at mobile games instead of being games but as a software service what EA Activision Tencent all these companies are doing is you're putting your product out there for super easy accessibility for not millions but actually billions of customers you're getting them to create accounts and use accounts on your network and platform and you're getting them to at least use your software on a nearly daily basis even if they're not paying for it even if they're not high value uh, customers it's getting in their hands and using it like that loss leader model how like uh, Adobe never really cracks down on Photoshop piracy because they want up-and-coming artists to be able to use it before they pay for it this is a huge success for any software company for any service company and even for any gaming or platform company just getting that out there in people's hands is a huge huge win this also comes with data collection and EA isn't really even being evil here in this one. Literally any mobile app that you have on your phone, I promise you, is collecting a ton of data about you. All the way from Twitter to just Google to Facebook to uh, Clash of Clans to any sketchy little third-party app. They're all collecting mad data about you. So that just comes with it. But it allows EA to pull better customer demographics. 
better uh, psychographics, better marketing data. They can run a little algorithmic test on purchases and interesting things like that. So that's another win for them. So there's a lot of financial reasons for EA to be making these mobile games, and there's a big underserved market of gamers that are very valuable. So why show off these changes at A3, though, is the question. And the answer is that times are a-changing. The younger generation of gamers amongst us does not separate mobile games from, quote, real games. Kids play it all. I mean, just look at Fortnite Mobile, uh, Pokemon Go, man, that's an adult success. Clash of Clans, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is a good one. These games are very popular. They're not discriminated against as being inferior or lesser. Lots of people play these mobile games together. They have a good time doing it. And from a pure financial point of view or from a marketing point of view, it may be more important for EA to promote this new and exploding market rather than to, say, promote Battlefield or Anthem or any of the work that Respawn is doing because the mobile games are going to make them a ton of money. It's probably going to make them a higher return on investment than the traditional games, and they know that there's a really big untapped market of gamers, so they want to use this opportunity, this big press conference, to hit home a marketing message for the mobile games to maybe reach more people, maybe look at, make it look more mainstream to kind of take away some of that shame and stigma. And to just get the word out there, gamers, hardcore gamers like most of you watching this video, you guys will get your information about Battlefield. You'll get it from me, you'll get it from somewhere, you'll get it from Kotaku or IGN, or you'll watch the trailer. Mobile gamers don't really have this level of accessibility. There are less YouTubers doing this. There are less websites reputably covering this. It's harder to get the proper marketing messages or find fun mobile gaming content. Though there are some mobile YouTubers that are exploding. There's tons of them that have 10 million plus followers, more successful and richer than I'll probably ever be in my life. There's people with 25 million, 30 million, 35 million plus followers that are just murdering it on mobile games right now. There are some insanely huge channels that you guys have probably never heard of that do The Sims or even The Sims Mobile. Mobile sports games, which are primarily dominated by EA. Pokemon Go, you're probably familiar with that one. Clash of Clans channels are ludicrous, and this is just to name a few games. So there is a big audience there, and there are people that are hyped for things like Command & Conquer Rivals, right? Like Command & Conquer Rivals is a really hype mobile game for that market, but there was a, still that disconnect. Like, all the mobile influencers cheered because they realized that hype. They knew how big that was going to be for their market, how much, like, content and stuff they could make for it. But everybody else is like, what is what is this kid stuff? You know, Papa EA, why did you kill Command & Conquer? This looks bad. Boo, as Critical describes it, it was, uh, I loved his little video on it. It was like, says, I would be more entertained by footage of watching my house burn down, like, Oh, God, maybe not quite that bad, but it was rough. Older and more mainstream gamers do not, and I, I will repeat this, do not want to see mobile games, period. It's the level of backlash and the instant cognitive dissonance they get is the same thing as when you compare a fan of one genre's game, just, or one game genre, to like Fortnite. You compare Battlefield to Fortnite, COD to Fortnite, something to Fortnite, and people immediately get really salty about it because they're tired of hearing about Fortnite, and it's the same thing with mobile games. So at the end of this video, I have a question for you if you've watched this far, and I want you to answer this in the comments. Do you think that EA made a mistake promoting their mobile games to the disdain of traditional gamers and getting memed on? Or do you think they made the smart choice by trying to push a message to a bigger and underserved market in order to grow that and make more money long term? Guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.